We're walking through the cave, looking for more snakes and bats. We're uh, walking on our tiptoes, crunch down, crunch down. Hey, this is Next Meridian. We are Nick and Mathilde and we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender, Albatros. Three years, seven continents, 88 countries and just the road as a home. Can you feel this wind? Clearly you don't, but it's the wind of change. The wind that's going to bring us back on the road. So tomorrow is the big departure for Central America. After six weeks, Nick is feeling better. We can move back to our car. So the first step is moving all the clothing back inside the car, all the food back inside the car. It seems like not much, but it actually takes a bit of time. Um, the good thing is that with Nick, we made sure that the car was impeccable already. So now we just have to like pour all of our stuff in there. And tomorrow, off we go. After six weeks of the world tour journey completely immobilized for Nicholas knee surgery, we are finally able to get back on the road. What a feeling! We missed enormously our full-time travel life. In this episode, it is our last days in Mexico. Last but not least, would you willingly go into a cave full of bats with snakes hanging from the ceiling? Well, we did. It was not a normal week on the next Meridian expedition for sure. I think we're ready. Passport, check. Food, check. Uh, clothes, done. Camera, yep. Computer, got everything. Done. We're ready. We go. Okay, let's go. After six weeks, we're back on your rooms. drone footage dreamy huh looks epic well from the road it looks much less smooth We're looking for crocodiles. This week we're really looking for all the weirdest stuff. In what? Tomorrow we're going to see snakes in a cave, and today we're looking for crocodiles. Boo! But I can't really see it very well from here. I will go around and try to see if there's a crocodile in the water. This is unfortunately the best image we got of it. So you will have to believe us when we say we saw a crocodile. Better than nothing. Found an awesome spot right now. Uh, this is the road we've been on and out of nowhere, bam, here is hidden elbow and right behind is the sea. 
and so we're gonna open the roof and spend our night here. We better not look what was left by the sea on the floor. And tons of plastic here. So we're going to go for a little cleanup first and then we will enjoy our time. But first, let's make this place a tiny bit better. I think he's going for your chips. I know, right? Yeah. Looking at us. Opportunistic bird. We just spent our first evening out since we left. Such a good feeling. We're in a beautiful place and we've just shown you around. This place is really legendary. We're not gonna stay a second night because we have a lot of cool plans and we want to catch up a little bit what we've been uh, missing in terms of timing. We're going someplace really cool. We're going to a cave with bats and snakes. Ready to hit the road? Yeah. Nice. where we're going to do the, um, the cave visit with the snakes we have like two three hours to wait because you can only go at night time and I was really wondering like who discovered this place like who goes at night time in the cave where like there's bats and and snakes I don't know honestly do you know it's super warm it's around like 33 and we're Boiling. That's something we didn't get used to the past six weeks because we had the apartment with AC so now we need to get used to being super warm weather in the car again. You're going to show me your cave proof outfit? Yep. Just okay. uh, give me a minute. Okay. Give me one second. Woo. Adventure Uno. Ready? Okay, my turn. Okay. Nice. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Se puede portar el camera? 
Sí, puede sí. llevar su cámara. Únicamente a la serpiente no le tomamos fotos con flash. Okay. Sí, pero, pero podemos... tenemos una lamparita que les vamos a dar con los cascos. Ajá. Las... Cuando veamos la serpiente, el guía que va adelante, es decir, luz roja. Uh -huh. Entonces mantenemos presionada la lamparita. Aquí es presión y queda en rojo. Uh -huh. Cuando llegaron los, las primeras este, gentes a vivirlo, existía la cueva. Pero no habían ingresado a ver qué, qué vivía allá, qué hay en la cueva. Uh -huh. Entonces, un biólogo que se llama Arturo Bayona uh -huh. vino al pueblo para hacer un trabajo del el proyecto para trabajar la laguna. Entonces, al volver de la laguna, como por ahí pasaron y vieron los murciélagos por montones, miles de murciélagos. Entonces, ingresó a la cueva y al ingresar vio que hay una serpiente colgada comiendo el murciélago. Uh -huh. Pero, y ya empezaron los estudios, y empezaron las pruebas, estudiaron la serpiente, vieron qué especie es, qué come, todo. We'll see what the snake eat later. Meanwhile, what we eat, however, let me explain something. The cave visits are managed exclusively by a cooperative of people from this small Mayan village. They're trained as guide for this specific cave. They are extremely protective and proud of the cave as it constitutes a unique resource and revenue stream for the village that is rather remote and off the traditional commercial and touristic route. They were very strict and careful and had many rules to ensure the natural ecosystem in the cave is not disturbed by those visits. You ready for it? Yeah, I'm so ready for it. Where are we going? We're going to see snakes that eat bats in a cave. No way. Is that what's happening right now? Is that what's happening right now? Yes. Okay, cool. And apparently we have to ride bicycles for 1.5 kilometers. So we're following the guide. We're here with two Australians in front of us. Let's find out. Here you go. Yo. <laughs> Dawn is advancing and we're advancing toward the cave. Ooh. It's very nice actually. It's kind of fresh. We're in the forest. There's no more sun. Like it. That's a lot, yeah. Bats are coming out. We have gloves so that we don't get dirty hands in the cave and also because bats and snakes are pooping and pissing everywhere and this is why we also wear masks just so that we're not getting anything in our mouth and the bats have started coming out so it's time to go and now we're going down it's uh, there's so many bats 100 to 150 per second coming out so let's see Okay, now we're going to check out on the snakes. So we are putting red lights. Nico and his new knee, <laughs> killing it. We're walking through the cave, looking for more snakes and bats. We're uh, walking on our tiptoes, crunched down, crunched down.
It is not always the case that the visitor can see a snake eating a bat, so we were lucky. We did not see only one, but two, and so four of the snakes on the watch. It is a rather brutal, but somehow quiet spectacle that usually only happens in the dark of the cave. Están estudiadas 150 serpientes, oh, no, pero no todas salen en una noche. Sí. Okay, we had to turn off our lights because maybe some snakes are coming back. So we're turning them off for a little bit so that they come out and then we go out. We can only hear the bats here. <laughs> they can see us but we cannot see them. Mm. Mission accomplished. We serve five snakes. Six snakes. Six, six snakes, including a baby. Amazing, huh? Awesome. Amazing. Oh, yeah. And two eating bats. Two eating bats. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> this place is tremendously cool, and we're so happy to have done the detour. Yeah, it, it was is worth it. Worth it. The show is not over. Now we cycle through the darkness of the of the forest. And where are we sleeping tonight? Um, in the Pueblo, I think, in the village. Tonight we sleep in the middle of the village. Everyone has allowed it. I just asked this guy as well if I could stay here. And he said, of course, no problem. And Jonathan agrees. So we're pretty good. Okay, time for bed. Huh? I'm dead. Oh. I'm not dead like a bat who just got eaten by a snake, but I'm dead. <laughs> nice. We put the mosquito net on. We've got Jonathan who's like, guys. And we've got the whole village also about to say goodnight. Nice. Good night, Jonathan. Good night. Okay, bye. The cave of the hanging snakes made for a memorable last adventure to conclude our journey through Mexico. And for our last day of almost three months spent in the country, we possibly found one of our favorite spots to wild camp, not far from the village border at the gorgeous Bacala Laguna. We found another sweet spot. Wow, pretty sweet setup. We have Mathilde peaceful in her hammock, Albo under a coconut tree, hopefully no coconuts fall, and the two chairs with me laying in the sun, and the awesome Bacalar.
ready to go. We took the last shower in our beautiful lagoon here. And now we're going to head to the Belize border. We are lucky because Tom, our friend Tom, crossed before us. And just like we did when we crossed Mexico before him, we like he gave us all of the information on what to prepare to cross the border. Uh, what do we need to cross the border? We just have to pick up our deposit that we left in Mexico when we entered, uh, close our visa and then get into Belize, pay the visa, pay the deposit and off we go, it's that easy. Yeah, it's super easy. I think we don't, like it's not even a formal visa, you don't have to prepare anything in advance. You just get like a tourist card of some sort at the border and we have like copies of all the documents at all time in the car so that we're ready to cross. Yeah. We're so ready to change country. See you in Belize! 45 minutes, we're there! And that's a wrap for Mexico on our way to the Belize border. 14th country on our world tour expedition. Thank you for watching and subscribe to the channel if you want to be sure you jump onto this world tour with us. See you next week! Mm. That's a... <laughs> nice! Good job! Good job! Good job! Nice! Six, that was six. Yeah! Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> <Good job. laughs> <laughs>